take the field for the new season, marking the 90th birthday of the Football League itself, because the league started in 1888 and Everton were founder members. And Chelsea also celebrating an anniversary. It's their 50th year in the First Division. And they're getting a good reception from a Stamford Bridge crowd enjoying the sunshine. But their attention is focused on one player in particular today on the Everton side, because Mick Walsh cost his new club £325,000 in the summer from Blackpool, and this is his first league game for Everton. Walsh will link up with Bob Latchford in a new striking partnership which could mean that Duncan McKenzie will be on the move, although he's unfit today, as are two other Everton players, Trevor Ross and David Jones. But at number six there, a new face again, Jeff Nolte, renewing his partnership with manager Gordon Lee. They were together at Newcastle, and Nolte today playing in midfield. Chelsea's midfield sees the return at number 10 of Gary Stanley. He missed most of last season through injury. And at number four, there's David Hay, who overcame that eye injury which threatened his career. The old stalwarts are still there again, Ron Harris at left back, and in goal, of course, Peter Bonetti, or perhaps we should say Peter Pan. 20 years a Chelsea player, he's been around longer even than match of the day. And like Ron Harris, Peter Bonetti today is playing his 712th first team game for the club. Certainly is Wimbledon weather this afternoon, many of the crowd in shirt sleeves. And the moment everybody looks forward to, the grass is green, a new season about to start. And referee Tony Glasson, about to put Chelsea in motion. Chelsea in the dark strip, blue shirts, blue shorts. Everton playing today in all yellow. Ron Harris. The header by Lyons. a foul against uh, Walker there, the outside left. Mike Pagic for Everton. George Wood, the Everton goalkeeper. Gary Locke's header. Everton did the double over Chelsea last season. They beat them here 1-0. In fact, they were the last team to win a league match at Stamford Bridge, Everton. And then they thrashed Chelsea 6-0 at Goodison Park near the end of the season. Ray Wilkins. Mick Walsh. Here's Nolte. Corner given. David Thomas. It was number six, Steve Wicks, who came across for Chelsea. Bob Latchford had his hair permed in the summer. <laughs> Foul on the goalkeeper. By the way, under the new law, goalkeepers can take a free kick from anywhere inside the six-yard area now if the offence was committed in that area. Well, Jeff Nolte fouling Ray Wilkins after making a mistake initially. Referee having a quick word with Nolte. And Wilkins finds Ron Harris. Mickey Droy had gone forward for the free kick to the far post, making his way back now. Nolte finding Thomas this time. Good challenge by Gary Locke. Wilkins. Wilkins beaten by Dobson. Oh, and Nolte's back pass, almost a present to Ken Swain. a foul by Wicks on Thomas. Well, it's all started rather frantically in the middle of the field, and 
David Thomas got caught there by Steve Wicks. Gordon Lee, the Everton manager, on the right as we look. Next to him there, Eric Harrison, the new first-team coach, just been promoted to replace Steve Burtonshaw, who's gone to Queen's Park Rangers. And David Thomas back in action. So a free kick for Everton to be taken by Pajic. Away by Benetti from Lyons. Mistake by Walker. The shot by King. Andy King. Well, that was beautifully placed. Peter Benetti up to fist the ball away from the head of Mike Lyons. And when it came down to Andy King, he struck that perfectly over the goalkeeper. And that's the first goal of the season for Everton who last season were the First Division's top scorers with 76 goals and opened their account for this season inside five minutes. Thomas. Dobson. Here's Pajic again, once more moving into an interesting position. Nolte, Darakot, and again Pajic. Nolte finding Latchford, and there goes King! That was a fine move and a good piece of goalkeeping by Benetti. Otherwise, Andy King, who could have had a hat-trick already here, would have scored again. Dobson, Thomas. Everton again with plenty of players forward. There are six in all, seven now. That's Pajic's cross. It's going to come to King in the same position from which he scored. This time, not so much room, though. Stanley was closing him down. And Mick Walsh has gone down. So the expensive new purchase requiring the attention of the Everton physiotherapist. Jim McGregor coming on to attend to Mick Walsh. So Mick Walsh with a bad bang in the face it would seem, being taken off for further treatment by Jim McGregor. 28 minutes gone, and Everton warming up their substitute, Neil Robinson. Be a sad thing if Mick Walsh in his first league game for his new club can't come back. Referee, I think, is going to check on whether Everton intend to bring the substitute on, because standing over there, he's certainly in the line of vision of players with the ball and could be a distraction. Droy's header, but here's King for Everton. Latchford, King again. Nolte up with Benetti this time. Langley trying to put Walker away. And Everton are going to bring on Neil Robinson, who is a fullback normally, or are they? There seems to be some dispute on the bench. The, I think Jim McGregor, the physio, is saying not yet to Eric Harrison, the coach. He was about to come on then, and he's been sent back, and I wonder if Jim McGregor thinks there's still some hope of getting Mick Walsh back on. Gordon Lee signalling there, but uh, they were in just in time, because once a player crosses the uh, touchline there with the referee's permission, he's part of the game, and the original man can't come back. Harris got up there well, here he is again, Walker now, oh here's Langley in space, but the turn not quite sharp enough to get past Mark Higgins by Tommy Langley.
Wicks was up there. And Wood did well because there was a Chelsea player in his line of vision as the Wicks header came through. He kept his ground. Here's Langley. Now Troy. That's a good ball, looking for Gary Locke. Fine ball by Troy. Plenty of support in the centre for Chelsea. Here comes Walker. Hey. Locke. Well, that ends a little spell for Chelsea, probably their best spell of the first half, but it occurred while Everton were down to ten men. And soon they'll be back to full strength because here comes Mick Walsh. Gather he lost a tooth when he got that bang in the face, but he's been repaired in the dressing room and comes back on. I think full marks to the physio there because he only just stopped Everton from making the substitution, it seemed. Harris. Way into Stanley, Langley has pulled away to the left, Walker's made a run, but both in the other direction. Good call there by Lyons from behind King. Nolte who's well forward but now it's Wilkins for Chelsea Stanley Chelsea's midfield finding it hard to stamp their authority on the match although Swain there was fouled King not retreating the 10 yards immediately and Walker claims obstruction by Darakot and rather think the referee has shown the card there at Terry Darakot. Well, it may seem a little harsh, but uh, it was a case of obstruction. So Walker to take the free kick. Pulled it back to Gary Stanley. Ken Shellito, the Chelsea manager, on the extreme left as we look, making the gesture. Dobson with the throw. Latchford. Oh, he came inside nicely there, Bob Latchford. Chelsea taken apart by that run. Well, that was a half that was shaped very much by the early goal. It was scored by Everton, by Andy King, in fact. And once that went in, Everton took command and might have had one or two more. I'm sure that's what Latchford and King are discussing as they go off. So Chelsea with a lot to do in the second half. Stamford Bridge has been the subject in the summer of considerable improvement work on the terraces. New barriers have gone up, new exits and entrances. All to comply with the Safety of Sports Grounds Act. Indeed, Chelsea during the summer spent an estimated quarter of a million pounds on improving their facilities. Everton, who start the second half here, really are something of a bogey team for Chelsea because apart from beating them twice last season, they also sent Chelsea down when Chelsea were relegated in 1975. Everton drew here 1-1 in the last match. And guess who scored the goal that day? Bob Latchford, the same player who put 
three past Chelsea last season in the two games. And here we have Everton leading 1-0 again, and there goes Latchford. Stopped by Wicks after he'd beaten Troy. Wicks, who may have twisted something as he went in. Walsh in the picture there, still slightly dazed, I think, after that first half knock. Lions getting up well. Oh, and again, and away by Wicks. Then by Wilkins. Pajic. Walker has switched from left to right at the beginning of the second half. That's an interesting move by Ken Shalito. Clive Walker, a natural winger, has gone on to the other side. Here's Gary Locke. Wilkins. I wonder if that might be to try and prevent Pajic from having so much room. The Everton left back. David Hay. In the way was Darricott, now Ron Harris. On by Swain. Langley is in there, but so was Higgins. Droy. He does put some fine crossfield passes with his left foot, Nicky Droy. Found Gary Locke there, here's Walker. Swain's header. Here's King, whose goal still separates the teams. And he's very much involved again here. Latchford, King almost collected the return. Stanley, foul by Nolte. That could be a booking. Yellow card's been shown. So, two Everton players collecting a caution in this opening league match from referee Tony Glasson. Nolte just then, and before him, Darricott. by Wicks but when the ball's in the air George Wood is a very commanding goalkeeper uses his height and weight well Gordon Lee the Everton manager on the right there as we look Mike Pajic Higgins, whose father was a centre-half with Bolton Wanderers, John Higgins, you may remember. Dobson. Out to Mick Walsh. Latchford over on the far post. And as he came in with Jeff Nolte, one of them fouled Benetti. Walsh has spent quite a lot of time wide on the right from the position where he supplied that cross. Well, Chelsea have got one card left to play here, and that's their substitute, Ian Britton, a midfield player. Swain, Stanley, Locks run up the right was checked by Latchford, so here's Ron Harris. Oh, Wilkins is in there! Oh! Well, how did he miss? He doesn't know, and I don't know either. Well, that was quite incredible because Everton, I think, were looking for an offside. And England's midfield player drifted through, got ahead of the defender, 
and well he may look annoyed with himself because somehow or other he managed to screw that shot past the post Chelsea about to make a substitution Norman Medhurst holding up the number nine Tommy Langley has had a knock actually I don't think he's being taken off because he's played badly but Ian Britton will come on Wilkins, whose miss now looks very expensive. There goes Droy in that new position, looking for Swain. And Darakot, who got a little mixed up, and it's a corner to Chelsea. Just a couple of minutes to go, corner to be taken by Walker. Droy gets up, oh, that's gone loose and missed by Britain. Oh, my word. He should surely have done better there. checks his watch again so in no particular hurry here it's Dobson with the throw and that's the final whistle Everton start the season with two very useful points away from home the goal scorer King in the fifth minute for a long time they look to be good winners Everton but I must say Chelsea in the last 20 minutes had three scoring chances and perhaps the best fell to Ray Wilkins who blamed himself for missing it and that let Everton off the hook and they ran out winners by that single goal well, not a brilliant match by any means, but a very competitive one considering it took place in almost tropical sunshine. And we've come to expect Gordon Lee's teams to be powerful and determined. And I asked him afterwards whether it was strength of mind and body as much a skill that wins the first division. Uh, well, I think you need certain types of that, that player, you know, uh, the aggressive type, the strong type, the forceful type of player. Uh, in English football because there, there, there's so many big fellas in the game. I mean, Chelsea today, they're two big centre-backs. Yeah. They're a good example. Uh, I have a boy, uh, my two boys, Lions and Higgins, are also powerful boys. So I think you have to have a certain amount of players to give them problems. Yeah. But uh, I think to win the First Division Championship, or maybe to win any championship, you need the right balance. And I think the big fellas have to be complemented, perhaps, by the smaller, neater players. We're all interested to see how the two Argentinians go uh, in English football. Um, and wondering whether they'll stand up to that aggression. Do you think we lean just fractionally too much towards it to win world competitions? Possibly so, yes. I, I think possibly we may a little bit. And I think perhaps, particularly when we play abroad, we might have slight problems. Maybe we have too many powerful players when we do go abroad. But uh, I still believe it's all about balance. And my memory always goes back to when England won the World Cup. And uh, people like Nobby Styles, as an example, I think he was the perfect balance. Uh, when England won the World Cup in 1966 and in Alf Ramsey had the right type of team, he had the right balance and I think to win any major competition you need uh, power and desire and courage and strength as, as much as you need the skill and obviously what you want is the right balance and have a little bit of both and I hope I've got them. <laughs>